In this video, we're gonna build a real Huggy Wuggy animatronic. We're Jamie and Jay, and we love bringing your favorite monsters to life, like this dancing Freddy, and this animatronic clicker from The Last of Us. Today, the challenge is to build a full-size animatronic completely from scratch, which we've never done before. We're making Huggy Wuggy from Poppy Playtime because he's freaking terrifying, but he's not super complicated, so it should work well. First though, we need a game plan. We're gonna start by giving it a PVC skeleton and putting that into a good pose. Next, we'll add a motor and some other stuff to make him move. Then we're gonna cover the whole thing in blue fur. <laughs> and finally, we're gonna make his super creepy head. Easy, right? So this is just regular one inch PVC. There's a bunch of different kinds of this. It's just like the regular kind. And it's super easy to cut with a PVC cutter. <laughs> in our candy slide video, we cut this stuff with a hacksaw and it was so annoying. But then we discovered this and it's made our lives so much easier. <laughs> it took like two seconds, so easy. The other cool thing about using regular PVC is that you can use regular PVC connectors. But the flip side of using these connectors is that you're kind of limited. So you've got like an elbow at 90 degrees, you've got a 45 degree. You know, if you're making a character, what if you want more movement than that? What if they're dancing and you know, you need, mm. you need lots of angles? So we did some digging and we discovered there's a thing called an adjustable PVC joint, but they're really expensive. So we decided to make our own. So I designed these in a program called Fusion and then we 3D printed them. There's two halves and each side has a little hole where we can put our PVC and then a bolt goes through like this. And then on the inside, there's these little teeth that come together and there you go. You could use this for an elbow or a knee or something like that. You've got all kinds of options for posing your character however you want. Another thing we designed and printed was this little flange and you can get these online, but for some reason they only come in metal and they're super expensive. So we just made our own. Now we could screw this into a board or you could stake it down into the ground and it's gonna help our whole animatronic stand up. If you want to print your own adjustable joint or flange, all the files will be on our Patreon. We're going to put a link in the description below. I am super excited about using these. We just need to print five more, so we'll be back. I ran out of black filament, so we had to switch to orange, but we got most of these printed. They look like Halloween colors though, so I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think as we go, we're going to have to adjust angles and things to get the right balance and pose, but I think we should just start putting them together. So this goes in here, and then you take one of these like that, that's and an that's ankle. like your ankle. But then I guess we start with a leg. These are a tight fit, which is good. This thing's gonna be really tall. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but he's got like massively long legs. Like this is where his waist is? Is he gonna fit in our garage? <laughs> I don't know, man. If this is where <laughs> the crotch is, like. I think we should probably start building like the waist and the upper body, but check this out. It's a giant huggy wuggy leg. <laughs> The plan for our animatronic is that at his waist, he's gonna kind of sway back and forth like this. And he's got these long dangly arms and hopefully they'll kind of go like this. So we made his hips out of a piece of plywood. And then we've got this other piece of plywood, which we're gonna put like that. And then our motor, which is a wiper motor for cars. This thing moves really slow, but it's really, really strong. So no matter how heavy this guy is, he'll move just fine. But this is gonna get mounted on like this. It's gonna move some stuff. Not 100% sure it's gonna work, but if it doesn't, we'll figure it out anyway. So we're using what's called pocket screws to attach these two pieces of plywood together. They make it really easy to just simply connect two pieces of wood. It's super strong and super fast. These wiper motors are meant to go in a car, so there's no obvious way to mount them to a piece of wood. So our idea is to use some hose clamps. This is so DIY, it's awesome. Hopefully this should slide right in. Nice. Now I could tighten these down and there we go. It feels really good. That worked a little better than I thought. The next thing we need is linkage. This is the stuff that connects the motor to whatever it is you're trying to move. Since this is all custom, we're making our own linkage from some thin aluminum. It's nice and light, but soft enough to cut with basic tools like a hacksaw and a drill. It's also cheap, which is really nice after you mess up and have to remake the same part like five times. Oh, look at that. If you're anything like me, it's super hard to visualize how this mechanical stuff is gonna work. But basically, this is gonna mount here and it's gonna go wee, like this. Look at this extravagant fur. I love it. So Huggy Wuggy's basically like a big blue giant stuffed animal. Yeah, but he's not a bear. We know that. We know he's not a bear. That was a joke because of this. Huggy Wuggy is a blue bear like a teddy bear with razor sharp teeth. But this stuff is amazing. It's a little expensive, so we got enough for just what we need and no mistakes. No mistakes allowed. No mistakes. <laughs> All right, his leg is 
52 inches, but it's gonna be bent. And you know how like when you're wearing pants and you bend your legs, like the ankle comes up? We need to account for that. So I'm gonna add 10 inches to it. Hopefully that should be enough. Don't mess up. I made this the right length, right? <laughs> Before I start cutting I'm it. just holding the camera. I don't know. Did I add my extra? I did. You're making me nervous. <laughs> He's got skinny legs, man. Yeah, his proportions are super weird. Yeah. So we're gonna sew it with the fur side in. That way, when we turn it inside out, our seam is gonna be in on the inside and our fur will be on the outside. One monster leg. So if you imagine that this is the bottom of the hips and the legs connect on the bottom, then coming up off of this is gonna be his spine and the whole upper body. So this little piece needs to go here. And to connect it, we're gonna start with a hinge. Here we go, something like that. Now, we'll worry about getting this super secure later, but for now, I'm just gonna put a zip tie on there so it doesn't fall off. Now we have to connect a metal arm from the motor right here to the spine. Everything's pretty wobbly at the moment, but we'll fix all that later. For now, let's plug it in and see what happens. Woohoo! So for now, I'm pretty happy with how this is moving. If we do want to adjust it, like for example, how far over is it leaning, we would change like the length of this arm and the positioning of everything. But for now, I think this is pretty good. I think we can keep going with the rest of the upper body. I think this is long enough for this. And then... His torso is actually kind of short, right? And I think it is that, really short. Like his legs are massively long and he's got this tiny little, little torso. Look at that, perfect. Perfect. Arms are coming out here, but I want them to round a little bit. Yep. Yeah? Okay. There we go. Yeah. Looks good. Okay. So we have to connect these to the bottom of this. Mm hmm Because we're going to see if it can stand, which maybe this thing weighs like a million pounds. Questionable. <laughs> I guess just start here. Um. Okay. That's actually not as it's bad as not, I thought it would be. It's not as bad. Look, I'm standing on it and it's standing, which is amazing. I kind of thought this would just crumble. So now that we know it actually stands up, I think we need to focus a little bit on his pose. Like mm -hmm. how does he stand, right? Is he standing like this? Is he standing like this? What we're searching for is a way to position the legs that's kind of dynamic, that will add to the movement and overall give us a character that's super cool looking. Oh shoot, wait, this is supposed to be the back. The switch. I even wrote front on there so yeah. I wouldn't forget. I kind of want to plug it in just to see if it like completely falls apart. Okay. <laughs> oh my. I love it. This is great. You guys. We made an animatronic. I thought it was going to fall apart. Now that we know our prototype works, we're gonna finalize this whole mechanism. The main thing here is to stop all the wobbling. Everything is just too loose. To attach the PVC to the hinge, we're using epoxy putty. It starts off soft, but as you mix it together, it hardens. We can stuff it inside the pipe here and it'll harden around the hinge, holding it firmly in place. That epoxy putty worked great. This thing is super secure. We also made a power cord and we got this little speed controller, which is gonna serve as both an on and off switch and controls how fast the motor's going. Also over here, I swapped it to some brand new pieces of wood that are thinner and we saved about 300 grams of weight just by switching to the thinner wood. So that helps a lot. Now we're gonna put it all together and wire it up. Okay, hopefully I did that right. Let's test it. Yay! Look, it could go really fast or slow. By the way, all these parts and stuff that we're using, we'll put links to them in the video description so that if you want to try this, you can get all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what? Look how big his head's gonna be. That, no, it is not yes, this big. Yes, it is. Look at that. It's huge and amazing. <laughs>
It's as big as his whole body. I can't wait to get started on his head, but before we do that, I need to work on his torso. We need to give him some mass, something for like the fur to lay on top of. So to do that, we're gonna give him a rib cage. Jay, why does it look different again? Well, I finished wiring up the rib cage and I actually made this top part a little bit shorter. But another thing was I just wasn't super happy with the movement. It was a little clunky. So I realized that these metal arms back here were just a little bit too loose. So after a bunch of trial and error in remaking these metal arms like 10 times, I finally got something that's looking really good. I even put some tiny little bearings in here so that everything can rotate freely. As he goes back and forth, I want his shoulders to rotate and the arms to sway a little bit like this. We're not gonna add a whole nother motor for that. We're just gonna use gravity. So this is a bearing and it's the same type of thing you see in just a skateboard wheel or something like that. It's a little bigger and we designed some parts that we could fit this in so that it fits right in the top of one of these PVC connectors. And then the top piece, which will be the shoulders, this side goes in there and then this fits right in here. And now you got a rotating PVC joint. If we replace this with his actual shoulders, then the momentum of him swaying back and forth should allow the shoulders to freely rotate like this. Look at that. Gravity. Who needs motors? I think the next challenge is gonna be maintaining all that movement once you put a kind of tight fur suit around him, which is what we're gonna do next. I took some scrap fabric and draped it over the torso to make a pattern. Now I can trace it onto the fur and cut it out. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> we could pivot and just be like a dressmaking channel. Yes, or like a swimsuit. That's <laughs> a furry swimsuit. <laughs> So I sewed the top, I'm gonna put it on him. I just wanna make sure it fits, have like a quick sanity check before I commit to doing the rest of it. That seems pretty good. Once we were happy with the fit, the sides got sewn together. So it's gonna be like the two separate legs mm -hmm. and then the, the torso, are the arms attaching to this? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do we ever know anything ahead of time? <laughs> Huggy Wuggy has these big, flat, bright yellow hands and feet, and we have the brightest yellow that we could find in the fabric store. Just like the blue fabric, we're gonna sew it inside out. Now, we can fill it. Now I'm gonna do the lines that differentiate the fingers, and I have to hand sew that, because when you sew through it, you don't want it to like squeeze all the way together. It only goes like halfway through. We have a hand, now I just need four more because his hands are kind of exactly the same as his feet. How many more? Four more. Three more. Three. I can count math. Hands are done, feet are done. Next, we're doing the head. We got a bunch of foam pieces, glued them all together, and put our template on the front. So now we have to cut out the template, and we got a bunch of new tools from Hot Wire Foam Factory, which are basically hot wires that just cut through the foam, and I'm really excited to see how they work. Normally we cut this with a knife, and it works just fine, but it's really messy. You get dust and all kinds of stuff everywhere, so I'm excited to use these. People have been telling us about them for a while. Yes. You can bend the wire on this tool to any shape you want, which made it really easy to hollow out his mouth hole. I think he's done. I think he's ready for fur. Conclusion is these hot wire tools are freaking amazing. They're so fast for like taking off big chunks and I'm sure once I get better at it, it'll be really good for details too. We also cut a big hole in his neck here to connect it to his body, but we will get to that in a minute. Look at that big smile. Cut a big old piece of fur out, cut his mouth out, and this should lay pretty nice over the front of his face. We also got this glue from Hot Wire Foam Factory. It's an instant tack glue and works on practically every material. So far, it's awesome. That glue is magical. I think it is. So now it's time for his lips. We found this EVA foam dowel and we cut it in half and I'm gonna heat bend that into the right shape. Is that my beard trimmer? Maybe. What are you? Look, I can't glue to the hair, so we're gonna have to shave a little bit of the hair away. But it's fine. <laughs> Look, it's all in the name of art. Since his mouth looks so much like a balloon, I actually wanted to put a balloon over the foam, but for the life of me, we could not figure out how to put the balloon on the foam. Like, it's impossible to do. 
So instead, we're just gonna glue it on and then we're gonna paint it real nice. That looks awesome. So we're gonna wait for it to dry and hopefully it all sticks. To make his giant eyes, we're using one of our favorite techniques. We start with a glass cabochon and then print out the iris on a piece of paper. We then use some clear glue and paint it on in a thin layer and glue one to the other. When it dries, it looks awesome. All you have to do is cut out the circle and bam, you got some eyes. After filling the gaps with a little spackle and sanding it smooth, Jamie painted the inside of the mouth a dark color and then put a few coats of bright red paint on the mouth. Once that was dry, she brushed on a thick layer of clear coat, which gives it a really nice shine. To attach the eyes, we marked the position with some pins and then shaved off the fur in the middle. Some five minute epoxy was mixed up and they got glued right on. Finally, the teeth. To make these, we're using fake plastic fingernails. Yeah, weird, huh? Since they're clear plastic, if you paint the inside of them only, then once it dries, they'll still be shiny on the outside. We used our reference image to lay out all the teeth, cut them to size, and then glued them in. Look at Huggy Wuggy said. I love him so much. Okay, we're almost done. This is going to be his neck thing. And what we did is we took one of our special joints and we put a couple of washers in between. So instead of locking closed, it actually freely rotates. And now this is gonna slide inside here. Now this joint is gonna allow his head to tilt back and forth as he moves. But in theory, this should go on just like this. Before we see a move, just want to say thank you all for watching. This week's Wicked shout out goes out to nine-year-old Mark P who sent us the best email. He says when he grows up, he's going to open up a store that's better than Home Depot and even better than Spirit Halloween. He told us not to use all our good ideas so that we can work together in the future. Mark, in 10 years, give us a call. This was our first animatronic from scratch and there were definitely some bumps in the road, but super excited and happy with how he turned out. And I think we're going to make more in the future. We even got some pneumatic stuff. Let us know in the comments if you like seeing this custom animatronic stuff. Until next time, stay wicked. There he is. He's super tall and creepy and he mostly worked. He did mostly work. We did have some problems. Basically, the head is so massive that the combination of the head tilt and the shoulder rotation, it was like breaking everything. Like it, it was went too way much. over. So we actually had to lock off the shoulders just so that it didn't break, which is... Uh, sad. Yeah, a little bit sad, but I think it was a good proof of concept. Like it did work. It's just that we didn't account for like the massive oversized head. <laughs> Another thing that happened was that he's not really leaning forward enough for the arms to swing as much as I was hoping for. So they do move a lot, but they kind of like bounce off his legs. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, lesson learned, I think going into the next one, we're gonna do like so much better. Yes. On the flip side, he looks amazing. Look at this head. Like, I am so happy with how he turned out visually. So did he bite you? He's got actual shark teeth. <laughs> Yeah, super happy with how he looks. Yeah, there's a lot we did right, and I think we learned a lot, and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty proud of this, so thanks for watching. Yeah.